Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study, the last study in the morning studies for this week, uh, dealing with uh, the book of Judges. Uh, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the time that we have to study again this morning. We invite your presence into our hearts and minds, and that you can unite us with one another as we open your word to receive light. And we pray for this movement and the people in it and those studying truth. You know the trials that many of us face, uh, and these are meant to develop in us a Christ-like character, a dependency and a trust in you. And so we ask, Lord, that um, you can give us strength for the trials of each day. We ask, Lord, for light on the book of Judges as it relates to our time. And we pray for the camp meeting coming up. We ask, Lord, that your spirit can be poured out on each person who attends. And we pray that you can uh, remove any hindrances for those that you wish to be here. Be with us now as we open your word together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning again. Now, um, we ha I added to this line a little bit. So this is that line of Jotham's line of Bimelech's downfall. And we had put in uh, the all of the fig and the vine in Abimelech's downfall and the bramble. So I added this little extra tag at the end just so we have all of those um, messages. <clears throat> so... So in Abimelech's downfall, we know that this is Jotham's prophecy, but Jotham himself has a line. Right? So when we look at this line, we say that Jotham's line is this light that comes to this movement prior to November 9th. And it's going to be the light that's going to counteract this message of Abimelech. Now, Abimelech, of course, is the first king, and we can see that even though this isn't about Parminder personally or anything like that, it is about the message that he sets in place. Now, on November 9th, uh, obviously, Jeff is there, uh, and uh, this message is there. We have November 9th. Jeff has predicted that, that that is going to fail. The prediction of Parminder and Tess is going to fail. So on November 9th, it fails. Uh, Jeff gives one week probation. So I'm starting that on November 9th all the way to up into including November 15th. That's why we have November 15th below that. And um, each of these messages are uh, a rejection of the message of what message, but it's a message rejecting something. Right. So it's it's uh, characterized in in the story um, that the trees are going to anoint. They want to anoint a king. But these messages, that is the all of the fake, the vine, they're going to reject this entreaty to be made king. But the bramble will accept this entreaty. So we, we sort of need to understand how that applies to the movement, uh, what particularly we're talking about. We put it there on this line. Um, now, when it says the trees went forth, because this is going to be uh, the parable. Um, so when the trees went forth, on a time to anoint a king over them. That's Judges 9, verse 8. They said unto the olive tree, reign thou over us. So how do we characterize these trees?
And this is just that the common Hebrew word etz. That's it's a ein and a tzadi. So it's common word for tree. Give me tree, wood, timber, stock, plank, stock, stick, gallows, firewood. Comes from uh, a Hebrew word, atsa, which means properly to fashion. That is to close the eyes shut. <clears throat> so he has this parable. Jotham is going to give this parable about the trees. Is this a message? Is this referring to people? Is it possible for it to be both? Okay. Well, it can be both, yeah. So what is this message asking the olive um, and she says the went forth and mention of a king reminds me of the going forth of the virgins to be uh, uh, to be with their bridegroom in Matthew 25. Okay. Um, well, the thing that's interesting about the went forth is it's the Hebrew word 1980, and it's doubled. Halak is the word. It's a very, very common word, uh, but it's doubled here. So uh, it's not just once. I mean, uh, I don't know why they have it twice. Young says, uh, the trees have diligently gone to anoint over them a king. They say to the all of the rain over, rain over us. So he's going to take that word, uh, um, the doubling of it, say diligently gone, because it's, it's usually a type of emphatic idea when you double a Hebrew word. So Young chooses to call it diligently gone. Um, so I'm not sure. Yeah, in the Hebrew, of course, they put a different form on the word. So you just have halak and then halho. And, and that's just because them, right? And and the word, you know, often means just to walk, right? But it's doubled there. So what is that? What does this mean? If we're going to put these trees and these parables in Abimelech's downfall, we're going to apply it in the way that we do. And we have these three main dates and then this fourth date, the bramble. How do we address this? So who is the king that they want to reign over them? What are they asking of the olive? Which we're saying, is this message that's connected to November 9th? And we're saying that this goes from September 7th to November 9th. So what happens in the history of this movement that we could characterize as uh, the trees asking uh, the olive tree to reign over them? 
as and to anoint a king. Why does the olive reject this? So we we placed the place the all of the fig in the vine at these three main way marks. No one has any ideas how to explain this? Well, <clears throat> would we apply this where the trees are seeking an outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Okay, right. So we know the olive is going to represent the Holy Spirit. Now, you would think, well, the trees wanting the Holy Spirit to reign over them. I mean, that would be a good thing. You want the Holy Spirit. These, these trees, the olive, the fig, the vine, these all represent uh, different aspects of the gospel, right? The olive representing the Holy Spirit, the fig. The fruits, the fruits of the gospel. Right, the fruits of the gospel, right? Um, and the vine, of course, we can see that it's it's related to doctrine. So so these are all good things. The all of the fig and the vine, they, they're not negative symbols in Scripture. But here in this case, they want to anoint these as king. And so we know that this these represent messages. At least that's how we've taken it. So. Uh, from September 7th, 2019 to November 9th, uh, 2019, we have, um, we're saying that this is this period of the olive. It's a message um, that relates to that period of time. And, and we know that, that that's going to be when Jeff wakes up on September 7th and he's going to point out the error of Parminder's movement okay so so these trees must be the people that hear that message of September 7th but they're seeking to have a king reign over them. Now, what I recall within this movement at that time is that uh, we had this me message of November 9th. Even within this movement, even after September 7th, I found it odd that people were believing that on November 9th, that they were not going to sin any longer. So what is it that people were asking of that message? Let's put it that way. What was their, their misapprehension regarding that message? That would make them perfect. Okay, well, that it would make them perfect, but what is the problem here? These trees want to anoint these messages as kings. That's the, the language that we have here. They, and, the, and they, they want don't have to have. What? That they have no personal responsibility that they're able to rely on mm -hmm. another 
for their for their need. Right. So, so, so we know the trees went forth and it's doubled, right? It's this this uh, Hebrew number halak, very common word, um, and it, and it's doubled, which means it's in intensity, right? Or emphatic. They really went forth, right? Or diligently went forth. That is, that is a strong desire on their part. Um, and, and they want to anoint a king. So they, the problem of having a king is that Christ is our king, right? We need to have a relationship with Christ. But people want something else to be their king. And so a message like the message of November 9th takes away the individual responsibility that we can get on by somebody else's coattails. Want a leader, want a leader. What's that, Jeff? They just want somebody to lead them. Yeah, they want somebody to lead them, right? Mm -hmm. So they're looking for a way of, of avoiding individual responsibility by depending on someone else or even a message or the movement in some way. So, so we saw this all through this history. That is, it's man looking to man. You know, so we, we could think, well, we're looking to God because, you know, we're, we're sincere. We want to <laughs> overcome our sins. But we think when we get to November 9th, we're not going to sin anymore. Or when we get to July 18th, um, you know, we're going to be vindicated. But each one of these are, are different symbols, the olive, the fig, the vine, the bramble. Um, so the olive here would represent the Holy Spirit. And that is people were looking for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit at November 9th, that they would, um, you know, not sin, that, that somehow something was going to be done magically for them. <clears throat> if they could do sort of not sin up till November 9th, then when they got to them November 9th, they wouldn't have to worry about that anymore. And, and that was an idea that was in this movement, even after September 7th. And I'm trying to think, because I wrote, yeah, it might have been in 2020, but uh, wrote about about this. And Jeff did respond to it. Okay, Jeff, you had a... Uh, uh, so I got baptized because of that thinking. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Okay. Or yeah. there's a hurry to get baptized before, for, before that point. Yeah. So, yeah. So <laughs> there, is, there is this, from my perspective, of how I understand righteousness by faith, Um there was a misunderstanding of righteousness by faith in this movement. That is, people wanted to have something visible that they could depend upon, which, of course, isn't faith. Right? They wanted to have, have something so that they didn't have to have faith, which isn't righteousness by faith. So we can say that the, all of that message there is the message that's uh, being misused, that is, this is the work of the Holy Spirit, November 9th is a proper date, but during that time, they're seeking to have this message reign over them. So when that prediction fails, we're going to have the period of the fig. So that's going to go from 11-9 to July 18. Now, so what does the fig... Um, symbolize so we know the first thing the fig fig would symbolize because the first time it's mentioned in the bible is where um the Hezekiah or not Hezekiah? 
Well, it's going to be yeah, well, it's going to be mentioned in Hezekiah, but that's not going to be the first time. No. You have the uh, the fig leaves being mentioned in Genesis three. Right. Yep. So you got the fig leaves in Genesis chapter three. Um, now there, of course, they're referring to fig leaves, not necessarily figs. But you know, so if you looked up the Hebrew word, you wouldn't find it there. Um, but that's where we first have fig leaves. Now we remember the the story. Uh, where Jesus is walking with his disciples just before the crucifixion and they see the fig tree and you see a fig tree with leaves, but there's no figs, right? And he curses the fig tree. So what is the connection between that story and the story in Genesis chapter three? Now, in Genesis chapter 3, it is the same Hebrew word. For some reason, though, it doesn't show up in my Strong's Concordance. Um, so it is the same word. But, uh, okay, so it is in Genesis 3, 7. It's the same Hebrew word. It's just the Strong's Concordance doesn't show it. But it is like number numbers would be the next numbers would be figs and numbers. Yeah, numbers uh thirteen twenty three. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. But I, I think this the law of first mentioning here, when we look at the fig leaves here, um they're trying to cover over their nakedness, right? Yes. Okay. And um, so how can we relate this to this symbol here? Is there something about July 18th that that people try to use to cover their nakedness? It's also in Deuteronomy 8.8, 8. It mentions fig trees, but the next place is Judges 9.10 and 9.11 9, and 9, is where it mentions the fig tree. So we've got figs themselves are mentioned, but the fig tree. Okay, well, let's go to Matthew 21. I'll show you this on the screen. And now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when they saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it, and they found nothing thereon but leaves only, and said unto it, uh, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If ye have faith, and doubt not, ye shall not only do this, which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. 
and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So what is this story illustrating? This is illustrating faith, right? Christ says to the fig tree, he curses it, right? Correct. It's and also, um, yep. the fig tree is also representative of the Jewish nation. Right. Okay. As, uh, one, of, one of the uh, fig tree that was, was expecting fruit while there wasn't any other fruit expected from the other trees yeah so you, you you can find figs on fig trees when there is no food from other trees is that what you're saying well oh my she just says that i was making the pretension of having fruit yeah because it had leaves and it should have fruit yes right yeah so that's in in uh, Mark, book of Mark, chapter 11, when Jesus curses. Now, this is the same story, just told a little bit differently. Um, and on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves. He came, if happily he might find anything thereon. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever, and his disciples heard it, right? And um, so this fig tree is going to be cursed there, and in uh, verse 20, and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember it, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. And then he's going to say the same thing he does in Matthew. So here you can see, in Mark, it's two separate days. You don't quite see that in the story of Matthew. Um, and so then he illustrates this faith that you can have. Right. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have ought against any that your father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. Right, so it's going to be included into everything else that they say about the answer to prayer, believing having faith. So this would be a message that would apply uh, from November 9th to July 18th, this need of faith. But again, the trees are asking that um, the fig reign over them. So what would that illustrate? We know the fig represents, of course, the Jewish nation here in this context. I don't think anybody's asking the Jewish nation to reign over them, right? So we would have to look at the fig tree much more as these other symbols, something to, to cover our nakedness, something to depend upon. So we were looking for July 18th to vindicate us. Yes. To vindicate the movement and everything that, that God had given us. And when it didn't occur, right, because July 18th isn't going to provide that for you. The message of July 18th was not meant to do that. It was a message meant to increase our faith, our trust and dependence upon God. And if we would have just had what we expected, that would not be faith. at that point, in that, that point of the line. Okay. Now, of course, the next is going to be the vine. So the vine, um, so this would be, I mean, there's different types of vines. 
Uh, but here, the first time that we have just, I'm just typing in the word vine, and we see it's 1612. Uh, so usually refers to the grape, right? And that's going to be in the story of Joseph. So we have the vine mentioned there. Um, so, so Genesis 49, verse 9 to 11. That's where we're going to have the vine first mentioned. At least that Hebrew word for vine. Uh, so I don't think we have any other one. And so the vine also can represent Israel. But in the story of Joseph, it's going to be uh, the butler who's going to have his dream with this vine, right? The three branches, and it's going to bud and blossoms are going to shoot forth in the clusters, and then it has grapes, right? He's going to take those grapes, squeeze them, put them into a cup, and he's going to give it to Pharaoh, right? So he has the positive dream he's not going to die like the baker and um genesis 49 11 says binding is full unto the vine and his ass is cold unto the choice vine so that's going to be the blessings of uh, judah right He washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. So we're going to apply this here. Uh, the symbol of the vine to December 25th, 2021. So how do we do that? Is this making sense, what we're doing? Because the vine here can represent um, doctrine, of course, right? So if we take the story of Joseph, you take the prediction before midnight, because that's what that story is about. Three days. Do we attach three days to that symbol of December 25th, 2021? Because that's the 20th day of the ninth month. The three days calls to Jerusalem to repentance. And so we've already said that this message here relating to that has to do with the call to repentance and the separation from the strange wives, which we say represents the incorrect method of Bible study. So does that fit with the idea of the vine being on December 25th, 2021? But what are people asking of the vine? So they asked of the olive to give them the Holy Spirit so that they didn't need to study for themselves, that they could depend upon others. They wanted the fig tree to be this sign, like when a fig tree casts its untimely figs. They wanted this vindication of their character of the movement yeah and and then with the vine they want the teaching or the doctrine to be done by someone else right so when they get to december 25th 2021 what they want is somebody to lead them to tell them what to think and what to do to tell them that they were correct, right, in what they had done. So, um, but they're not going to study for the, themselves to see where they were wrong, because we were wrong. And and I think 
to a large degree that many people in the movement have a hard time admitting that they're wrong about something. That we were wrong in our approach to how we were doing, looking at things. But we had to admit that we were wrong about some things. But I don't think everybody is willing to admit that. That's my perspective. I could be wrong about that. But from my perspective, that's what it seems to be. Well, if they admit, admit it wrong, then um, the whole message, everything is wrong then. Well, but it's not. Because we can be wrong because we're the Millerites wrong about things. No, I was saying that's what people would think. People were yeah. thinking. Right. But the whole the whole thing is wrong. Yeah. Well, so and and we saw this through this history. Um that people were taking a position that um well, you know, if Trump's not elected president then this message is wrong. Because we have to think about this history between July 18th and December 25th, because it's representing that history, is the history of the vine. So from July 18th, people are having a hard time admitting that we made a mistake, at least you understand what I'm saying, that, that because we did make a mistake. And some people have said, well, we made a mistake, but it's all wrong, right? But that's not the proper approach. Because in order to, 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 to recognize the mistake, we needed to examine where that mistake was. The mistake was not in making the prediction either of November 9th or July 18th. Those weren't wrong. Right? God led us in making those predictions. So we said the mistake was in those that misled us in making those predictions. But we ourselves were just merely deceived by someone else. Were they deceived? Did Jeff deceive them? When Jeff, you know, promoted July 18th, was he deceiving people? Was he mistaken? Or was he being led by God? So hopefully we can see how these things apply. I mean, I'm asking the questions and not many people are answering them, but. I think we're just still thinking about it. Yeah. But we should be able to see how the all of the fig and the vine are true messages from God. But they're not, they don't, they're not going to fulfill the purpose that people want them to fulfill. Because that's not their purpose. So when we get to December 25th, people will get a message that will offer them what they want. And that's the message of the bramble. It doesn't provide shade. It doesn't bear fruit. It doesn't have any substance. What is the bramble? Is that a uh, weed? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's uh, basically a thorn bush or something like that. Oh, you know, okay. humbleweeds are not particularly sure which plant or how they're related. But oh, yeah, it's something that, that just basically you, you burn it in the fire. You can use it to start fires or kindling. But it, it doesn't serve any other purpose. And so in December 25th to January 11th, we have this bramble offering to reign over the trees. 
but it's not the correct message, right? It's not the all of the fig or the vine. These messages will not will not take away your individual responsibility of study, of prayer, of character development. But the bramble offers this. It's a counterfeit message. Now, when I say that, it's not that what Colin presented was error. It's, it's that what he, his conclusions were error, right? That is the conclusion that Trump is going to be elected president and he's going to bring in the Sunday law. But people are attracted to that message because it is a crossless message. The all of the fig and the vine, the messages of November 9th, July 18th, and December 25th are messages of the cross. It's of individual responsibility. That we individually need the Holy Spirit. That the fruit, which is the fig, needs to be there, not just fig leaves. We have to have a Christ-like character. And we need to understand truth for ourselves. And we need to know that what God had revealed, that we, we need to understand all that God has revealed. The big problem, and I was thinking about it this morning, that we have in this movement, um, is that there is a lip service to July 18th, just as... Adventists have a, a lip service to some degree to October 22. But I think there are a few people who understand why we came to July 18 in the first place. It is if you were to ask people in this movement, how, how come we came to July 18, 2020 as this event, they would be unable to tell you almost anything about it. They wouldn't be able to tell you about Revelation 9 or Ezekiel or Samuel Snow's letters and how we came to it. They wouldn't know the history of how we arrived at that date. And so just because people make a profession, well, we made a correct, they'll say, we, we were correct in predicting July 18 because we have to say that. Because if we, say, if we reject July 18th, we, we show that we're not part of this movement. So they'll give lip service to it, but they don't understand it. Just as Adventists don't understand uh, the sanctuary doctrine and the 2300 days, they couldn't give a study on it. Um, they, we know very little about our history, hardly know anything about the Millerite movement. And yet we're going to talk about and support an idea about what's coming about this Sunday law. And we don't even understand the foundation of our message. This is a major problem in this movement. It's not just that people have some wrong ideas. They draw some wrong conclusions. It's that we don't even take the time to understand this message. And the complaints are that it's too complicated. It's too hard. It's too difficult. And that's not a good excuse. Just because something's hard or difficult is not an excuse. I mean, I might have a six-year-old complain that something's too hard or an eight-year-old or a 10-year-old. But to have a mature Adventist saying that something is too hard that's in God's word, it doesn't make any sense to me. That just means that you're going to have to work harder, that you're going to have to put a greater effort if something's hard. So the message of the Bramble provides this idea, the easy way out. We're just going to wait. Trump's going to become president. When he becomes president, the Sunday law is going to come. And then we will be vindicated. We don't have any work to do. 
because all of the all of the fig and the vine require something of us, but the bramble doesn't. So what Colin presented, he presented truth that this movement should have studied. That is, when we got to December 25th, 2021, and light came to this movement, instead of shutting out that light and just saying, oh, we just want to have, we just want to have this presented and we don't want to have any discussion, that's actually asking for the bramble. They want a message to reign over them, and the bramble will provide that. The all of the fig and the vine don't. That's how the bramble, I bramble doesn't last. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't last. It's not something that you can can give you shade. It doesn't provide any fruit. I know this can seem quite harsh. But this is us. This is this movement. This isn't somebody else. I agree. Right? Because it's us who want the olive terrain over us or the fig tree or the vine. All of us have experienced this. But are we going to settle for the bramble? Are we going to just want anybody to reign over us instead of Christ? So the message of the all of the fig and the vine need to be studied and understood. We need to understand November 9th, 2019. We need to understand the message of July 18th, 2020. And we need to understand what God revealed to us on December 25th, 2021. And that is the call to repentance to divorce from the strange wives. And that's the process that we're in. Now, the bramble brings us to January 11th, 2023. So that's the end of Colin's prediction. And so in that period of time, we have this we had that opportunity to, to recognize what was being taught and why it was wrong. And I'm not saying that that's a close of probation. I'm just saying that that way mark is, is marked there, January 11th, 2023. And remember, when we have an eighth, it's actually an entire line. It's just represented by this one date or this one way mark. <coughs> and we, we will examine that in more detail. And that's more in the story of Samson, that we actually address the January 11th way mark. But does this look satisfactory, what we have here with this line? Well, so far at this point, at this point it does. Now, when we when we look at this study of the judges, we know that Judges is giving us this history of this movement from 9-11 to 2023. And it's going to be presented at the camp meeting in the summer. And, of course, people will be able to watch it. On YouTube, we'll have the videos posted. Um, so, but this is really a, a study of, of how God was leading this movement all through its history, but particularly from 9-11 to 2023. But, but even from 1989, it, it, we need to understand our history. Now, with Jotham's line, these, um, the ideas that are being presented in each of these years, these are, these are essential to understand. That is, this is light that has come to this movement regarding, um, you know, how we understand the lines, how we understand the prophetic mirror, right? The line upon line of the prophetic mirror. How we understand the symbolic use of dates in Millerite history. How we use chronology. 
how the prophecy of Revelation 9 uh, gives us this symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. Um, the 391 and a half, right, in the prophecy of Josiah and Josiah Lich, right? So that's an expansion of that. The book of Ezekiel. Samuel Snow's letters and the symbol of July 18th. How these things are applied in producing the line that we see in the 707 seven days and how they're all tied together. These are what these are the things that we need to understand in this movement. This is the additional light that God has given us to understand Millerite history. It's the unsealing of the of the seven uh, of the seals that were sealing up the scroll, right? And, and the seven thunders, right? So you have, initially you have this, the seven seals. They're unsealed, and they're unsealed in Millerite history, but then we're going to have a sealing up of the seven thunders. That is, Mil Millerite history itself is hidden to Adventism. And the seven thunders have been unsealed in this movement. And this, this is the light that we have in regard to time, right? That's what's sealed up in the seven thunders, this message in relation to time. And how time applies at the present time. <clears throat> Anything that we should add to this line? I mean, I'll, I'll end up putting them in, in here in their separate lines as well. Yeah. I'll be looked over, looked over first. Yeah. Okay. So, so here we have this line. Now, when we look then at Jotham's line and Abimelech's downfall, right? So we're looking at them here. We should be able to see the relationship between these dates and these dates. That is, the, the truths that are presented here in each of these seven waymarks relate to the waymarks that we have here. So here we have December 21st, 2012, this failed mine prediction. And 25, 20 days later, we have November 15th. And on November 9th is presented this, this Mayan calendar, right, at the School of the Prophets. Then we have this June 22nd and October 22 date, right? So we put them here. You can see we got June 22nd. And this is, of course, the formalization of the message. But it lines up with this April 26th email. So... When we go here, this is this email. So I probably could just take this and put this here. So we didn't finish up some of these uh, verses that we need here, um, just because of how we're doing this. But so I could just add that there, just as a bit more detail. So we can see how these two line up. The June 22nd, Ezra 7, right, where it talks about this the June 22nd in 2011. It relates to that. It relates to that symbol, right? So we can see that lines up. And with Jeff's presentations, two presentations, we can see how this lines up um, with 2015. Right, so this is going to be uh, this symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. 
And so how does this line up with Jeff's two presentations on July 11th? We know that this relates to the mind calendar understanding, right? It's going to point to this period, July 10th to 11th. And then in 2016, right, so when we look here, in 2016, we have this 391 and a half, right? So that's going to be here. So July 16, 2016. Now, and what verse are we going to use to support this? So what is this? referring to July 16. This is the part we have to still finish off. So we said that we were going to go to Judges 9. We, from verse 5, we had these three score and ten pers persons. So... Um, so how do we apply this here? You understand what I'm asking? We're, we got the July 18 date, and we haven't put the verse that we apply here. We just have July 18, 2020. And same with Jotham's line. We have July 16th. This is going to be the presentation at the School of the Prophets on July 16th, 2016. I'm going to present the prophecies of Josiah, the 391.5. And we're going to line this up here with July 18, 2020. So how does this relate? Because when we look at this line here, we're going to have uh, in this, in 2017, we're going to have, have Snow's letters. And we're going to have uh, 187. July 18 is going to be the symbol presented here. All right. This is going to be September, September 23rd. And we're saying that that's going to line up with um, this date here, March 27th, 2021, Julian, which is April 9th. People understand what we're asking, what we're doing here. I know I'm jumping around, but <clears throat> we have this March 27th, 2021 date, but this is actually April 9, 2021.
Okay. <clears throat> So what are we doing? What are we lining up? We're saying that the September 23rd, uh, 2017, when I present at Lambert Church, um, I'm gonna put here, Lambert. I'm going to present Snow's letters and the July 18 date, the symbol 187. So how does this line up with April 9th, Gregorian or March 27th, Julian in 2021? Have we done this right? Are these... Do these make sense together? Am I doing too much? Is this too much information? They look to be logical. Okay, so what's the logic? Can you explain it? How can I line up September 23rd, 2017 with uh, April 9th, 2021? Are we not having a look at a progression of these messages? Okay, yeah. Because as as what we've been talking about with this from Judges 9, throughout the history that we have observed within the movement, we were waiting for different portions of a message but we weren't wanting to give the personal efforts that justification and sanctification were going to require we wanted this all just to be ethereal we wanted it to be something that was going to be very spiritual and it's going to just occur without us having to put forth any effort. Okay. Isn't that what we're really seeing here? Okay. Yep. Now we have, um, yep, so we're seeing that. The question that I'm asking is we have this, this event 777 days before November 9th, 2019, right? So when we look at these lines, right? We're gonna take this event, September 23rd, you know, I'm just gonna do it this way, 187. So September 23rd, 2017, I'm gonna take this symbol, and we know that this is 777 days before November 9th, right? And, and then we're gonna have way over here, April 9th, um, that this is going to line up with this. They're both the fifth way mark. Right? So we have this way mark here and this way mark here. And we're saying because they're both the fifth way mark, they're on top of each other, even though we put them in this line. And, and the truths revealed on September 23rd that are going to be presented address Samuel Snow's letters, right? And the July 18 letter in 
particular as the symbol of the prediction before midnight. And then we're matching this up with a date that symbolically is a message to the Levites, March 27th, right? But it's a Julian date. The, the date is April 9th. Now, I put the March 27th Julian date, date there. Um, why? Why did I put the Julian date and not the Gregorian date? If we can remember why I did that. Because we have the Gregorian date, March 27th, also in 2021. But I put the March 27th Julian date as this way mark. Do you remember why I did that? I'm not recalling it. Okay. So on November 9th, I present the Mayan calendar, the symbol of 273. Right? That's what I'm going to present. That's the 273 right here. Right. Okay. And that that 273 that I present is going to give us this date, April 9th, based upon using uh, the Mayan calendar, 144,000 days. and applying that to the prophecy of Josiah, Josiah Lich, right? So I'm going to take Josiah Lich's prophecy, Revelation 9, the 391 years, which is 142,810 days, and I'm going to see that the difference is 11,190 11 days, right? And then I'm going to take a calculation of that. I'm going to take these divisions, the 12th and the 10th, and et cetera, and do a calculation. And when I, when I do it with the 1,400, uh, 142,810 days, I get the date that is, which isn't on here, but it's going to be uh, October 11th, 2019. And that I'm going to... Um, uh, present on November 9th. And then I'm going to see that, that the 144,000 days produces April 9th, and that it's 273 days um, to July 10th. And if I go the other way, it's going to be 273 days from this October 11th date, right? So that was this chart here. So that's why I have this April 9th, 2021 date, right? That's what you see here. See, I took this calculation, 142,810 days, divided by 12. So that's going to give me 11,900 days, right? Multiplied by 5, that is by the 0. 0.5. And I'm going to add that to a number which is uh, also divided by 10. So one-tenth of that. I'm going to add them together, and I'm going to get this number, 65454, which is going to give me October 11th, 2019. And when I do the same thing with the 144,000, okay, i got to look at Stephen's uh, thing there. When I do with 144,000, it gives me 66,000 days. And so when I take those two dates and I divide them by two, I get 273. And the center date there is July 10th. They're just going to say it's July 10th to 11th, right? That's how we're going to apply it because we're going to take Jeff's two presentations. So that's why I have the April 9th date there. Okay, so, so I have it there as this formalization of a message. Now, Stephen has a comment in the chat. Um, 
H2, H2T began 27th day, third month biblical calendar. So what's H2T? Uh, Habakkuk's two tables. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so, so Habakkuk's two tables were pr first presented on, so Stephen and I had this conversation trying to figure out when they were first presented. This is going to be in 2012. And it's going to be on June 17th, right? So I'll just show you what he's talking about. Now, we figured this out uh, based on uh, dating. I have the actual original videos with the dates of when they were modified before they were uploaded to YouTube, right? So... Um, so the first video was uploaded to YouTube on June 22nd in 2012. That, but it wasn't recorded on that date because that's going to be the Friday, June 22nd, I believe. Um, so, yeah, that's the Friday. So it took them a few days to get that uploaded, at, but it's going to be on June 17th. So they were live streaming these on YouTube. And then what they had to do after they live streamed them for us to watch them on YouTube is they had to edit them and then upload them, right? Um, so so that was edited on um, or uploaded on June 22nd. But the first presentation was June 17th. And you can see the biblical date is um, the 23rd or the 27th day of the third month. Savan 27. So this is when the first presentation, Habakkuk's two tables, number one. Right? It's also in the Mayan long count. The last two numbers are 813. So that's a symbol of Palmoni. Now, on these lines, uh, we don't have um, that in our lines, per se. We do have, uh, you know, we know that the events of 2012 are connected here. But, but he's going to start those in 2012, and he's going to finish them in uh, 2013. I'm not sure the exact date he does the last presentation. But the thing is, we have this symbol of March 27. The, the biblical date, the 27th day of the third month, in that history. But I'm saying that we're lining this up with September 23rd, because they're both number five on these lines. And we're saying that there's this symbol. Now we have July 18 as the symbol based on September 23rd. And we know it's 252 days between... March 27th, 7th, 2021, going back to July 18. But here we're going to have um, um, an extra 13 days, right? So you take 252 plus 13, and you're going to get 265. So this is going to be 265 days later. Doesn't seem to be particularly significant in that sense. But we know we have the symbol of March 27th. Right. So even though this is March 27th, Julian, and it's April 9th, Gregorian, it's still symbolizing that March 27th date in 2021. OK, so anyway, we can we can take these symbols of March 27th. It shows up again and again in the lines. It's here on November 9th. Um. But we know that we're taking the September 23rd date. Now, September 23rd can symbolize 273, right? Let's see why not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you got July 27. I'm not sure. 
Iran, what's that, July 27th? Yeah, it's not July 27th, it's uh, the seventh Islamic month. And I, oh. Yeah, and the 27th day, okay, which so is a complement to 273, by the way. Okay, so by complement, he means if you take uh, 273 and you subtract 1,000, you'll get 727, All right? That's what he means by a complement. So, um, but we can also see September 23rd, it has the, September is the ninth month, but we also know it, it represents the seventh month because sept means seven, right? Originally it was the seventh month. So, and you can see it has the iteration of those numbers. Right, two seven three seven two three. It still has those those numbers. <clears throat> okay, so so we can see how that then relates to this March twenty seventh date. So there's more to it. There's some other little number things that we could do that connect some of these dates, but you know because. If you go from September 23rd, 2017 to March 27th, Gregorian, uh, 2021, it's 1,029 days, which is um, 1,029 days divided by seven. Oops. It's going to be 147 weeks. And 147 divided by 3 is 49, right? So you can, and 49 is 7 times 7. So 7 times 7 times 3. So 7 times 7 times 7 times 3 is um, this number. 1029. But anyway, those those are sort of minor little things. But we can see that there's a connection between these various dates. Now, of course, that's March 27th, Julian, or, that we have here, but I was using the March 27th Gregorian to do that calculation. But March 27th, whether it's Julian or Gregorian, can still be the same way mark, right? And then we're going to have this April 26, 2021 date. So why do I have that date here? And how does this relate to this October 29th date? So April 26, 2021, uh, what is that date? Why did we put that date there? <clears throat> Is there any significance in April 26, 2021? We put it on this line, at least I did. <clears throat> It is the mine date Did that have something to do with one of either Colin or Odilio's studies? Okay, so um, so April twenty sixth, twenty twenty one. Um, I don't think that it did. Yeah. 
Now, at that time, we were examining the foundation, right? So uh, primarily, we have it as a symbolic date. It's going to be just a Monday, so it's not any presentation other than we got study number 37, examining the foundation that's presented there. But we didn't we didn't really decide on what that date meant other than a symbol. But where's the symbol and why would we put it there? As part of the Bimelex downfall. I mean, maybe there should be some other date there. That's the date I have put there. But primarily it has to do with the symbol of the 26th day of the fourth month. And are we using that 26th day of the fourth month to point toward midnight? Um, okay, so it would be the symbol of the midnight cry, right, if we took it as, as Millerite history. So, so we have that date there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but... Now, this date I had arrived at in different ways. So I have this date on other lines. Um, so I'm just going to see if I can find this here. Well, I can't find it. So many April twenty sixth in my charts. Okay, so one of the ways in which I look at this date is here. <clears throat> so we have the 2520 days from the start of the Mayan calendar to November 15th. And then there's 264 days inclusive to the bombing of Beirut on August 4th, 2020, and then 264 days exclusive on April 26th, 2021. That is, it's going to be from that bombing in Beirut, if you don't count that date, and you count 264 days, it'll be bring you to the beginning of April 26th, 2021. So you can see... Um, that the Mayan date there, uh, the last three digits are 7, 13, and 3. You multiply 7 by 13 by 3, you get 273, right? 
So this was a study of these Mayan dates. Okay, so if that makes sense to people. So that's one of the ways in which I understand this April 26th. Um, lots of April 26, 2013. So I think that's where we, and we had put that April 26th date there when we first went through and marked um, just looking at all the April 26ths. It's probably somewhere I don't put the I now at the end. But anyway, that's the date that we chose. I guess I only have one. Is that the correct date? Or is there some other date or event that we would mark in 2021? that's going to line up with this October 13th to September 7th. So that's going to be 329 days span, which we took Judges 9-7. We still have to put the verses in here that we're going to use for Abimelech's downfall. So we still have to finish off that part of it. So we still got some work to do on this. But I want you to think about that April 26th date. Um, is it the correct way, Mark, for Abimelech's downfall? And why do we have these dates here? Now, we can say that there is this mirror here, too, the April 26th, 20 date. It's going to be one year later to the day, April 26th, 2021. And that's going to be when I... So if we take the lampstand idea... The two and the six are combined. The three and the five are combined. Right? And we can see how those are combined because of the 273 days. Right? <clears throat> so I should finish that off. And obviously November 9th to 15th is going to be connected to December 25th. Okay. Any any questions before we close? Because we're gonna have to come back to this on Sunday. So we still still have work to do on this, but I, I want to get this finished up on Sunday. We don't want to have. I want to move on to the next uh, section, which of course is going to be uh, Tolan J. Year. So that's going to be the Samuel Snow's letters, or, or well. Not really, but connected to that. Okay. Let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. We ask for your presence throughout the rest of this day. We pray for the studies on Friday evening and on Sabbath morning. And we pray that uh, this Sabbath will be a blessing that's coming. Help us to prepare. May your angels watch over each person. May you uh, help us in our plans and preparations for the camp meeting, in the studies, and writing these things out. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.